It's World War II. Europe and the rest of the world are having their issues and their issues about solving their issues. One of the European nations who were not in the war but were in the war is Spain. Spain, although officially neutral, did have their open secret affair with the Nazis, which went so far that Franco, Spain's dictator, wrote to Hitler in 1940, offering to join the war. The siding was so clear that one of the Allies' operations during the war was to take a recently deceased homeless man who had died from eating rat poison and release his body near a Spanish shore, where the body would be picked up the following morning by Spanish fishermen. The deceased had on his person fake documents that contained fake attack plans on Greece. The Allies were hoping that the Spanish would take the plans to the Germans, ultimately being correct. And so, to put it all into one sentence, Spain was very much buddy-buddy with the Germans. Enter Juan Pujol Garcia, a Spanish man born in Barcelona on Valentine's Day 1912. Juan, the third of four children, grew up in a boarding school until he was 13 years old and transferred to a school which was run by his father's card playing friend. However, after having an argument with a teacher, Juan decided, screw this, and no longer wished to remain in school. From there, he became an apprentice at a hardware store, studied animal husbandry, and managed various businesses, including a cinema. It was around the time of the Spanish Civil War that Juan had started to develop a disdain for political extremism. His sister and his mother were arrested and charged with being counter-revolutionaries. His sister's fiancé was taken by Republican forces, and, to top it all off, he himself was later called for military service on the Republican side. Juan, having a bit of a grudge against the revolutionaries at this point, hid at his girlfriend's house until he was able to obtain forged papers that showed him to be too old for military service. Later on, however, he joined the Republican military using his false papers, with the intention to desert as soon as possible. He managed to desert to the Nationalist side during a later battle. However, he was equally ill-treated by the Nationalist side, disliking their fascist influences and being struck and imprisoned by his colonel Juan Juan expressing sympathy with the monarchy. His experience of both sides left him with a deep loathing of both fascism and communism and by extension, Nazi Germany and the Soviet Union. In the end, he was particularly proud that he had managed to serve both sides without firing a single bullet for either. In 1940, during the early stages of World War II, Juan decided to become a spy for Britain as a way to do something for the good of humanity. He started by contacting the British Embassy in Madrid and offering his loyalty to the British government which they told him to sort off each time he contacted them. Undeterred, he decided to create a false identity as a pro-Nazi Spanish government official and officially became a German agent. If you can't beat them, join them. To double-cross them. The Germans gave Juan a code name of Alaric. His German handler, upon accepting Juan, gave him a crash course on espionage, the bottle of invisible ink, a code book, and £600 for expenses. His instructions were to travel to Britain and recruit additional agents. Instead, Juan moved to Lisbon, Portugal. Portugal, the side character to Spain's story, was also officially neutral during the war. However, they were much like the Spanish, but instead were in bed with the Allies, much to do with their official long-standing relationship with England, the oldest in the world. This allowed Britain to more freely operate under guise in Portugal. And it was here where our hero took head of his operations. He created bogus reports about Britain from a variety of public sources, including a tourist guide to Britain, train timetables, cinema newsreels, and magazine advertisements. Juan soon established himself as a trustworthy agent for the Germans, although the information he provided would not stand to close scrutiny. But the Germans had other things to focus on. They did, however, from time to time, pick up on false information and mistakes. But Juan had simply used fictitious sub-agents that he created to put the blame on for those mistakes. Funny enough, some of the misinformation includes his alleged contact in Glasgow would do anything for a litre of wine, and that the British did not use the metric system. 
in British intelligence, were able to intercept some of his reports and despite the errors in some of them, MI5 decided to launch a full-scale spy hunt. The Allies had finally put their faith in Juan when he was able to make the Germans spend a considerable amount of time and resource hunting down a fictitious convoy. From there, Juan and his family were taken to Britain, with Juan being given the codename Bovro, named after a drink concentrate, which as a fun fact is also known in South Africa as a yeast extract, in competition to Marmite. Moving back to Juan, one case officer was so impressed with him that he was referred to as the best actor in the world, thereafter his new codename being changed to Gobbo, named after Greta Gobbo. Juan's fictitious spy network was so efficient and verbose that his German handlers were overwhelmed and made no further attempts to recruit any additional spies in the UK. Juan, together with his British handler, spent the rest of the war expanding this network, often communicating to the Germans through letters at a postbox in Lisbon, and later through radio. The Germans were basically funding a network of 27 agents, none of whom existed. In one event, Juan had to invent reasons why his agents had failed to report easily available information that the Germans would eventually know about. For example, he reported that his Liverpool agent had fallen ill just before a major fleet movement from a specific port, and so was unable to report the event. To support the story, the made-up agent eventually died, and an obituary was placed in the local newspaper as further evidence to convince the Germans. In fact, the Germans were also persuaded to pay a pension to the agent's widow. <laughs> I mean, damn. This guy is so good that I feel that one day Angela Merkel will just hold a press conference where she reveals that she was just made up by Juan all along and never existed. Juan's biggest moment came in 1944, when he had a key role in Operation Fortitude. He was to deceive the Germans about the timing, location and scale of the invasion of Normandy. The false information that Juan had supplied the Germans convinced him that the main attack would be at another location. The Germans, as a result, kept large forces of the military stationed there before and after the invasion, drawing away considerable aid that the Germans would have had on Normandy. In fact, there were more German troops in the other region two months after the Normandy invasion than there had been on D-Day. At the end of all this madness, Juan had proven his ability and loyalty to the Allies. This is only further backed by what he was able to achieve. As a lyric, he was awarded the Iron Cross Second Class in 1944 for his services to the German war effort. The award was normally reserved for frontline fighting men and required Hitler's personal authorization. They presented it to him via radio. As Garbo, he received an MBE, Most Excellent Order of the British Empire from King George VI on 25 November 1944. The Nazis never did realize that they had been fooled, and thus Juan had earned the distinction of being one of the few, if not the only, to receive decorations from both sides during World War II. A pure legend.